Before we get into the video, I'd like to let y'all know that I'm doing a giveaway for an LTI Argo Atlas. In order to participate, all you have to do is be subscribed and leave a comment in any video between now and the end of December. Let's get into this video. So we're going to head away from our cop for now. Let's look again into the stars. And now we're going to talk about solar systems. All right. Stanton system was the primary system in the game. It serves as a lawful system. It's protected by the UEE and will continue to be evolved and updated as we balance it with other systems. Then we have Pyra system, which we've spoken about at length, and this will serve as the primary unlawful system and is the perfect contrast to Stanton. Then, as we just saw, we have Nix system. It's not a totally unsafe system like Pyro, but it depends on where you go, as it borders Vandal space. See that little bit of red? That's Vandal space right there. And the UEE does not protect this system. But we've got a little bit of space there, haven't we? All right, I thought he was saying click system then. I'm like, well, I'm not sure about that one. All right, but we've got a bit of room at the bottom, so it would be a shame not to fill it in with something, right? So if we get a big cheer, we'll reveal the system. Are you ready? Very cool, very cool. All right, here it is. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, okay, all right, all right, okay. <laughs> so, let's take a sneak peek at system number four. Here it is. Well, it's awesome, right? All right. No, in order to reveal the fourth system, let me take you on a little history lesson. And to do that, we're going to load up our old friend, the Galactopedia. So, we're back in the height of the human Xi'an Cold War. Tensions were at breaking point. In 2542, Armistead Perry introduced a designation line for a group of eight planetary systems that marked the borderlands between Xi'an and human control space. The United Planets of Earth designated the systems as no-fly zones and utilizing them as military staging grounds. But one system on the Perry line offered a key strategic position for a potential invasion into the Xi'an Empire. And that system was Castro. <laughs> but luckily for us, war was averted, the Paraline Pact was signed, which was a peace treaty between the now UEE and the Xi'an Empire, so the Cold War ended. The systems of the Paraline were divided up between humans and Xi'an, and fast forward back to present day, humans and the Xi'an enjoy a more prosperous relations. And everyone's cool. <laughs> so, the fourth system will be Castra. History lesson's over, so let's jump in and find out a little bit more. First, we have Castro One. Here it is. Castro One is a dead, coreless planet because it's too close to the sun to be terraformed for human habitation. So instead, the UEE Navy used Castro One for target practice, giving it the nickname of bullseye. 
all the weapon testing throughout the Mesa era has left Bullseye covered in craters. And as you can see, it's super toxic, meaning ground exploration will require high-end environment suits. And as you saw in the weather demo, raging storms will create difficulty of access, giving risk and rewards for adventurers seeking unique mineables and other items. OK. Then we have Castra 2. The second planet from the sun is called Cascom. And this was the location of the military's staging area. Since the system was opened up to non-military settlement, it has since become a center of trade and tourism, but is still considered an Earth-centric traditionalist system, which prizes citizenship above all else. Let's head down to the surface and check it out. Breaking through the clouds, you'll find a landscape full of great lakes and lush crimson forests. And as you saw in the CTG presentation, you can see how we're going to make these worlds with the new technology. High up on the mountain range, here at the highest peak, we can just make out the landing zone called Sherman. which is fondly known by its residents as the island in the sky. Sherman is currently in pre-production, but I wanted to take the opportunity to show at least a sneak peek. Let's take a look.
Awesome. Let me take you through some of the areas of sermon you just saw. The dominant landmark you see in the center is Spaceport Ulysses, named after the mountain Sherman is sitting on. This is where they staged the bombers that were on active rotation, waiting on any sign of any aggression. But now it's mostly a commercial spaceport. The Navy still has an air base here, but it's a great place to see some big ships of the UEE. Commercial hangars are located inside the main trench. And even though this is a converted uh, from a naval base, it still has an impressive military flavor. And speaking of military flavor, the original AOV-9s, anti-orbital cannons, are still present around the defensive walls, with most of them being decommissioned once it became a civilian city. Over to the left of the spaceport is the Sparrows Industrial Park, home to the sprawling cargo yards and manufacturing plants. The Sparrows has evolved from its days as a military supply and munitions depot into a bustling and modern industrial park. To the right side of the spaceport is Fort Riggs, which originally used to house the army when Sherman was used as a staging point for a potential ground assault of the Xi'an Empire. Since the area was decommissioned, it has now been turned into a business park and is the governmental center of CASCOM with the Governor's Council headquarters located here. As this base was built during the Mesa era, as humans were expanding their borders, this introduces a new architectural style for humans. Between the First Trevorian War on one front and the Xi'an Cold War on the other, a new style called Henoism arose. With an emphasis on prefabrication and fortification, the designs were robust, durable against warfare and harsh enemies and harsh environments. And from all the locations we just saw, high up on the upper wall, you can see the commercial district and specifically the Ansel shopping complex. Situated high above the sprawling main base below, the Ansel area originally served as the command center to Sherman's military operations. Inside this building, you'll find key areas like the edge of Oblivion Bar, which, which was converted from the old officer's lounge. You'll also find Eckhart Security Headquarters, and you'll find the Mercenary Guild Headquarters. The other areas in the commercial district include the OPA Towers for Habitation. That's the building on the left. And on the right, it's the Imperial Sherman Infirmary. There's also the Reeves Military Museum, where you can experience the history of humanity's military and the role that Castra has played in keeping the empire safe. And finally, we have Overlook Point, which is the name of the vantage point and park situated in front of Central Command, which has the best view overlooking the landing zone. So that's a quick overview of some of the key areas of Sherman. I think it's devastatingly beautiful, with a rich history and unique mood and vibe. Awesome. So before I go, I want to thank you all. You are all awesome. All your passion, all your dedication make our lives as devs so much easier. And thanks to the CIG staff, who's the awesome work we're seeing in front of you. <laughs>